best-selling author, Jane Green. Oh my gosh, how are you beautiful? I am wonderful, Millie, and I'm thrilled to be with you this morning. It's lovely, lovely to see you. Thank you for inviting me on. You absolutely look so fabulous this morning. The glasses, it's the glasses for me. <laughs> Thank you. It's, uh, it's, it's, they're actually my reading glasses. And also my eyelashes are a bit wonky, so they, they hide that, so yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm scrolling through, I just want, I've got to tell you how I, I came across you. I, um, I am scrolling through Instagram, right? I'm scrolling as I do. And I, I'm looking at, at four or five pictures with women that I recognize with gray hair and you as the author. And, uh, you know, I, the gray thing, is, is the gray the new black? Is the gray the new orange? Is it, is it just the new 30, the new 40? Yeah, yeah, I, I, think, um, I think gray is the new blonde. Yeah, that, that's what I, I think, you know, I, I definitely, I went from sort of blonde to pink for a while. <laughs> I saw um, that. Yeah, which I really loved. And actually the gray came because, um, in order for my hair to be pink, which it was for a couple of years, I had to bleach it. And I woke up one morning and half my hair had snapped off. So I went from having oh, long God. hair to having very short hair. And thankfully it's growing now, but I just, I, I also have been all of these, they call themselves silver sisters. I saw been, that. Have been cropping up on my, on my feed and Instagram as well. And I'm looking at these women and I, I, I actually have a thing about silver hair. I don't really have silver hair. I have more salt and pepper. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I'm, I think the silver will come in in time. But I'm looking at these women at any age from 20s upwards. And to me, they just, I loved how powerful they they seemed and how comfortable in their skin and i and i just thought the statement they were making by saying it's okay to to yeah. age it's okay to be who we are and and i sort of there are so many layers to it because i think it's covid we weren't able to go out and and get our hair done and i also think that we've we're slightly battling against the fake perfectionism perfectionism of Instagram. I think Absolutely. we've lived with that for a while now. And I think this COVID has been a bit of a wake up call. And it's like, we're just fed up with, with perfectionism and with the filters. And yeah, certainly, I mean, certainly women my age, I, I'm, I'm loving seeing the younger women doing it as well. But, um, and so for me, just letting the gray in, um, is very much, you know, a statement. Um, it, and, and just, I, I've reached an age where I don't need, I don't need to be looked, to be noticed in the same way, which is good because you definitely become more invisible when you stop coloring your hair. Right. I, you know, I am going to, and this will be the only time I do this on this interview, I'm going to have to disagree with you on the women at any age. And let me tell you why. Because I got this gray, and it's a lot more of it. You just have to be see me in person. Um, honestly, I got it honestly. So I, women coloring their hair silver, I feel like get it honestly, like I did. Oh yes. <laughs> oh I, no, I, I totally agree with that. But actually, the, I'm surprised at how many 
I agree. French and somethings. No, no, they have their gray cut back. They've turned gray and they're letting it go. And that I think is very beautiful to have, you know, to have this sort of gorgeous young face and then the shock of silver hair. It's just. Stunning. Yeah, I'm waiting. I, I'm hoping because mine is, I think about 60% gray. Yeah. And um, maybe about 60%. So I'm not even going to color it. I used to hide it. So I've read all about you. So I do understand when I read some of your articles, I thought to myself, me too. So my hair was dark brown. So I got the dark brown covering when I saw a little bit of it. And then let me tell you, I, I couldn't do it anymore. I said, let me just go gray. Now, the good thing about the young people is um, now in the beauty supply stores where I am, um, since the Rihannas have done it, right? And things of that nature, they have gray crochet and sometimes gray braids. I haven't done the braids, but I've done the gray crochet until so I was rocking it I'm taking pictures I'm loving it it's full it's amazing until one of my friends said <laughs> um and she's a, a radio personality I will not mention her name um and she said oh I I thought you were just doing that for show I'm like no I'm, no, I'm really Aww. great yeah then she it, I let her quickly and I know she didn't do it on purpose I let her quickly kind of change my mind. And then you have, a, a, I always speak to everybody. There's a lady that in my neighborhood, she's like, oh, you know how they look at it? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so you're just gonna, you know, because you can, you know what I'm doing. You know exactly what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You're just gonna let it. And then it, I didn't think about it at all until they both said that. But here's something that I think is really interesting. I think we traditionally have always thought of women who let their hair go gray as having somehow given up. It's like, and you don't have to give up. I have a full face of makeup on. I have, I've got my lashes. I've got my jewelry. I can still glam it up with the best of them. Yeah. And, and you can do that and still, and still have gray hair. It doesn't mean that it's all over and you're sinking into the next stage of your life and you're never going to leave your bed again. Right, right, because I think I, I um, equated it with old age. Until yeah. I found out that gray is hereditary. So I'm looking at my mom like, thanks, mom. You know, and, but also wisdom. But I did find when I had the gray, I found that younger men were trying to hit on me. Oh, really? Yes. Where, where were you going? Where, <laughs> where, should, I, where should I be going? Um, uh, you know, it, it's we we've um and so uh, with our Clear Production TV Radio Network before COVID, we were traveling all over the place. Uh, you know, uh, Boston, Atlanta, so North Carolina, and you know, guys were like, "Hey," I'm like, "Hey," I was singing like, I was like, "Hey," with Ooh. the with the gray. Well, I, I love that only because I've written quite a lot about the invisibility yes, of old age and, and, and I wrote a, a novel once called Tempting Fate, which actually became a movie on Lifetime. <gasps> and it's the story of a, of a happily married woman who goes out with the girls one night and this really cute young guy starts chatting her up and she, it's so nice to be paid attention to by somebody young and cute. So they exchange emails, but she thinks nothing of it other than, you know, being flattered. And uh, at the emails start coming in. And of course, what happens is every time when somebody pays you attention like that and you're at a stage in your life where you're feeling invisible, um, it, it is very easy to have your head turned for no other reason than it just makes you feel alive. It makes you, it makes it you. It does. It does. And with that, we're going to go on a quick break and we'll be right back because literally you have written 22 books. Fabulous. This is Millie in the City for Beyond Me, the show. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. This is Millie in the City for Beyond Me, the show, and I'm on with the beautiful, stunning New York Times best-selling author, Jane Green. Oh, I thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. Oh, I, I just, this is, this is the highlight of my weekend, and I, I'm just thrilled that you invited me here. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I originally um, looked at the article and looked at the gray, and I thought, awesome article. But once I started doing my research, 22 books. Mm. Woo. So you said you are bed addicted. Does that mean you've been reading in bed this whole time? <laughs> well, I, so I, I'm very binary. I'm, I'm in that I either have a ridiculous amount of energy and, and I run around like a lunatic accomplishing more in a day than, than is, should be humanly possible, or I'm in bed. But I mean, I can stay in bed for weeks. Very happy. Now, bed for me, it's not about sleep. It's just, it's the place I feel safest. Yes. And it yes. Cozy. And I, I, I've got everything I need. I have my cats. I have a dog. I, have I saw that. Computer. I have my iPad. I have a pile of books. I, I and I just can very happily you know, I can write, I, I don't generally write in bed, I like to get up and, and write, but but certainly if, if I'm going through one of my, when the switch is off, bed is where you'll find me. I love it. You have a new book coming out, but I just couldn't wait to speak with you. Um, tell us a little bit, the name of it, a little bit about that, because I know you kind of did a snippet of what you're going to be doing on Instagram. Yeah. Well, I've done a real swivel, actually, because I, I've, all the books I've written have been about women like us and our lives and, and dealing with, you know, boyfriends, husbands, pa aging parents, children, teenagers, you know, all of it. And my editor then said to me um, a couple of years ago, have you ever thought of doing historical fiction? And... Uh, and I thought, well, you know, I'm not that interested in doing a World War II book. There are, you know, that's very popular right now. And I'm, I'm not so sure about, about old, you know, history. I, it, it's not really my thing. But the era that I'm obsessed with is the 70s. Oh, I should have mm. age in the 70s. Everything, everything. The, the, the music, the clothes, the hair. Um, I was going to say the drugs, but I was kidding. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, no. Um, but the late 60s and the 70s are just an era that I find fascinating. And there, there's a story that I've always been interested in, which is um, John, J John Paul Getty, who was the son of the richest man in the world. And I don't know if you remember, the grandson was kidnapped and had his ear cut off. Do you, I don't know whether this was a big story in the 70s because he was the richest man in the world and, and his grandson was kidnapped from Rome and the kidnappers cut his ear off and mailed it to the parents in, in mailed it, which is, which, anyway, he, he then, they rescued him. But um, the son was a hippie and he married a very beautiful Dutch actress called Talita. And Paul and Talita Getty bought a crumbling old palace in Marrakesh. And my new book is the story of a girl in London, which is where I grew up, um, yes. who falls in with a crowd of like rock stars and, and all kinds of very exciting people who are really living life on the edge. And she gets whisked off to Marrakesh and into this life that looks impossibly glamorous and exotic and hedonistic, but actually is very dark and things will, things start to go horribly wrong very quickly. So that's my, my new book, but I, it doesn't have a title. I, my working title for it was The Pleasure Palace. And my oh. editor said, well, everybody thinks that it's, it's erotica. <laughs> I, I, okay, I was yeah. I'm like, yes, Pleasure Palace. Yes. Oh. <laughs> do you know what that's so, well your reaction is really interesting because that makes me think that maybe i should be doing some erotica on the side under a pseudonym but you, but, need to, you, you i i'm i i ain't gonna, don't tell anybody but i i got some stories that under a pseudonym oh, i would love to put out but too that's, scared too yeah. scared when people know it's me when people judge it i don't know well that and that's the beauty of a pseudonym no one need ever know and i, I have to tell you there are people making fortunes who are self-publishing erotica on amazon and are selling hundreds of thousands of books 
Well, now you've changed my mind. I've got little short stories. I'm going to call my producer. Oh. I'm going to talk with him as soon as we get off here. <laughs> oh, I'm stories. telling you, Millie, this is what you should be doing. And especially if you've got some stories to tell, they, they, you need to put pen to paper. Oh, I love it. I love it. So when does this new book come out? Do you think so this, uh, it, this comes out summer 2022. So the last book that I wrote um, that's on the shelves is The Friends We Keep. And that came out about three years ago. So I've had a, a, a little bit of a break, I guess. Um, but so I'm coming back with a bang. Yeah, you have been busy. I've seen everything. You you fell in. We'll talk about that later. But I saw that you fell in love with your neighbor. Is it you? Was it your neighbor in three days? My what land. Day? My landlord. No, you know, it, I I was married. I had four tiny kids, and I was terribly unhappy. And um, we had a fight one day. And my former husband said, "What do you want me to do? Do you want me to? Do you want me to leave?" And I, and I, it was like I remember having this vision of the hand of God coming down and opening up an exit door. And then three days later, he moved out. And three days later, um, I, I thought, "Well, I, I need to be by the beach for the summer because I'd been living in this little beach town in Connecticut." And I thought, "I need to go back because that's where my girlfriends are, and, yeah. and you need you need your support system." So I looked online, I found an ad for a tiny little beach cottage on Craigslist. So, so he always still says, oh, we met through Craigslist, but there was a tiny little beach cottage. I picked up the phone, phoned the number, the landlord answered, and he said, I think we know each other, Jane. We've, we've met through friends. And he was, uh, he was somebody that I had met a handful of times through friends. So I moved into this tiny little beach cottage with my four little kids. And of course, fell completely in love with living by the beach and shortly thereafter fell completely in love with my landlord, <laughs> who is now my husband. Um, yeah, so that's that's my love story. I oh God, I love your love story. I have a little bit of one of my own, but I want to get quickly back. We do have to take a break. Uh, the Friends We Keep, just the title of that has has the hairs, you can't see them now, but has the hairs on top of my, my skin uh, because I, I have stories about friends and why did we keep them so long? Why were they friends? Were you the same friends? Uh, are they the same friends to you as you are to them? And so I think I'm going to have to pick up that book. I, you know, if I pick it up, maybe you can sign it for me because. Oh, I, you know, I would, I would love, I will send you a signed copy actually. Oh, I would love, I would love that. that. I would love to read that. And you know what else I can do? I can also send you a signed copy of my cookbook. So I have a cookbook. Yes. So I, I would love that. You know, I wouldn't mind, you know, my daughter and I started not really a book club. We started to read um, some books. I, I forgot the name of the first book, but it was so interesting. So if you send me two, I will gladly pay. Oh, <laughs> no, no. It would be my pleasure. How old is your daughter? 26. I know. I know. I, I look 26. I know. No, I, no, no. I thought you were going to say younger, actually. I, I was going for a high teen. I was thinking you yeah. were going to throw out a high teen. But that, that is, well, isn't that the... I'm going to cut you off really quick. On that note, I'm going to take a quick break. And so we'll be right back. This is Millie in the City for Beyond Me, the show. We'll be right back. <laughs> Back. This is Millie in the city for Beyond Me, the show. We're talking to the beautiful, the stunning New York Times best-selling Jane Green. You are delightful. I love you. Thank you so much for, for just talking with me today. I really appreciate it. It's just the English accent. Honestly, if I was sitting here with a Brooklyn accent, you'd be like, oh, it's very boring. <laughs> So the friends we keep, we were just discussing it really quick. You're going to send us a couple books. My daughter is 26 um, with, um, with, I have a grandson. Well, I have two actually. Oh, I'm so 
Tell us congratulations. The friends we keep, she and I have had discussions and now we are, we, we've been best friends for a while. So I do love that. So I cannot wait to get this book and so we can read it together. I will totally give you my thoughts, but I have a feeling that it's, it's going to resonate with my spirit and with my soul. I, I have a feeling already. Yeah. Well, I, 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 definitely, I definitely know that my books attract a certain kind of person. Um, and, and I'm feeling that, yes, you're, you're my kind of person. <laughs> now I saw, I know we don't have a lot of time because you're super busy, I get that, that you said you were an amateur decorator, but what I saw no amateur Miss Green at all. It's gorgeous. Oh. I see, yeah, I see pictures like that in Ag Agriculture Digest. Oh, come on, it can't yeah. be amateur. You're doing uh, amazing. You know, uh, here's the thing, I and and it's something that I do feel quite passionate about. I think that too many people here, and and so remember, I spent, I grew up in London, so so you know, 30 years of my life was spent in the UK. And when I moved to America, one, I thought I knew Americans. I thought I understood the culture because I, I'd grown up on a diet of, of, you know, American TV and movies. But one of the things that I never realized about Americans is, is how they bought into the culture of perfectionism. When I say they, I, I mean me. No, well. I get it. But I, I get it. I think that and I, I look, I'm a huge fan of Martha Stewart. I think she's amazing. And the way she does things, the way what she, I think what she presented was this this perfect lifestyle, and I think that we all adored it. But but we've put, taken it a little too far, and we've put so much pressure on ourselves that that if this ties into friendship. Rather than having people over to our homes, we don't because we're worried that we can't cook or we can't cook well enough or our house doesn't look right or we want to wait until we redo the porch or you know whatever it is. And actually. I think, I mean, my home is, is beautiful and completely comfortable because yes. there are cat scratches on all the sofas. There are, there are a few, you know, those, those pillows loaded up on the sofa because they're kind of hiding some coffee stains and nothing is perfect. It's all a little yes. bit messy. And, and that's, I think that takes the pressure off people. When, when you walk into a home and, and it's comfortable and warm and, and invite, that's what you, you want people to walk into your home and feel like they can kick their shoes off, curl up on the sofa and just relax. I love that. And I think, you know, I like to have people over, over. Martha Stewart did make it seem like it was perfect and you have to be perfect, but nothing is perfect. You know, even raising my grandkids, we, I could have just wanted to leave the house and we come, we come to an event or anything like that and everything was perfect. But what you don't know is five minutes before that, one of them beat on themselves or just wouldn't get out the car. You're just like, you don't even know what I went through. Even today, to coming into this interview, I have no idea what I went through just to get on this call by 11. And that's the, you know, that is my real sadness about Instagram is Instagram has sort of has put so much pressure on us. And, and you know, whether we're, and this is what I always say to people, you're looking at my house and my house looks gorgeous. But let me tell you, 30 seconds before that photo was taken, I moved three piles of crap that are six feet high on my kitchen counter, just, you know, a few feet to the right out of frame. Like, yes, I love it. I love it. Um, so we don't have too much time left. I love that you said, because uh, now I understand that you are a pursuer of happiness. Not only did I love the movie, but even after the 30 years uh, with your husband, I see how, how that translates and you just being a pursuer of happiness. A lot of people don't put that on their Instagram. Well, I, I so I, I, I think that happiness is a choice. Um, I think that, that life is where you look. And I often tell this story about a woman who pulls into a gas station in a small town and she says to the, to the attendant, I'm moving here with my family next week, what's the town like? He says, well, what's it like where you live now? And she says, it's awful, the people are unfriendly, we don't know anybody, they're rude, they're enti entitled. And he says, well, I, I think you'll find this town as much the same. Oh. And, then, <laughs> and then the next day, a different woman pulls into the same gas station, says to the attendant, hey, I'm, I'm moving here with my family, what's the town like? And he says, 
what's it like where you live now? And she says, it's so wonderful. I love all my neighbors. We get to go, we have barbecues every weekend. We found the most, the best people. He said, well, I think you'll find this town as much the same. And the moral of the story is that life is where you look. It's life is life. Life is going to throw terrible things at you because that is unfortunately what life does. It's also going to throw beautiful things at you. It's the value that you, you every morning, you can wake up and choose to be happy. Now, the way that I have found, because I, I was not a naturally happy person, yeah. I had to actively put myself into a state of gratitude. Absolutely. And there, there is a quote by a psychology professor called Robert Emmons, and he says, gratitude is a sustainable approach to life that can be freely chosen for oneself. It is choosing mm. to focus on blessings rather than burdens, on gifts rather than curses, and people report that it transforms their lives. So oh, that, that is how, and I've watched people do this. I've what, and what I always say to people is, you know, wake up in the morning and before you do anything, write down three things for which you're grateful. And whenever you feel yourself spiral into the negative or into the, the fear, just immediately pull yourself back. Three things I'm grateful for right now. And it can be the time, it can be that, that I had milk to put in my coffee, that the sun is shining today, that my son surprised me, came home from college last week and surprised me. You know, whatever it is, three things you're grateful for. I absolutely love it. I, you know, thank, I just knew I was going to get more out of this interview um, <laughs> and you've given me more and I really thank you. And I'm so looking forward to the cookbook because I do, that's one thing it, People collect so many things, snow globes. I collect cookbooks, wow. but I'm now on Pinterest. And there's this one thing on Facebook called, well, I was on Facebook when I saw it, called Tasty. And I've done some, I've done some uh, recipes on that. But I really want to say thank you again and good luck on your next book. I, I can't wait for the actual title of it. Well, I, and I would love to come back when it comes out next summer and we can talk about all kinds of other things. Yes, we can. And the, well, the erotica privately. The pri well, I was going to say, and, and perhaps, yes, you'll, you'll send me your erotica short stories. I love it. I love it. Thank you again. I can't wait for this book to come out. We will surely have you back on when it does so we can talk about it and just explore. Um, and you just, you have a great weekend because I feel like you will. I feel like you will. Thank you, Lily, and you too. And it was just lovely meeting you. Thank you so much. This is really in the city for Beyond Me, the show. Pretty deuces. Bye-bye, guys. Check me out next week.